Hello and welcome to GP Notebook TV. My name is Anish Katecha and I'm a GP in South Wales. Today I thought I'd discuss with you the recent NICE guideline that talks about the use of dapagliflozin um, in patients with um, chronic heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction. And this guideline came out in February of 2021. So why is this important? Well, we on our lists usually have quite a few patients with uh, chronic heart failure and we know um, that symptoms such as shortness of breath, fluid accumulation and fatigue can be very debilitating. And we've got certain medications that we use at the moment and the kinds of things that we tend to give our patients are things like ACE inhibitors um, or angiotensin receptor blockers um, if ACE inhibitors are contraindicated or not tolerated. Um, and we can also use things like beta blockers in mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists. We also commonly use diuretics for any congestive symptoms. Now, the DAPA-HF uh, trial was a, a trial um, that looked at the use of um, dapagliflozin and compared this to placebo um, in patients with um, chronic heart failure um, that were that had an ejection fraction of 40% or less um, uh, and that were already on optimal um, medical management. So characteristics I'm sure we can all relate to um, in general practice. Now the recommendations from NICE were that we can use dapagliflozin in these patients with uh, chronic heart failure um, and as an add-on therapy to those already on um, uh, optimal medical management. And this might include things like ACE inhibitors or your ARBs, um, if uh, not tolerated, uh, along with um, beta blockers and uh, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists or uh, those are on, uh, that are on um, sacubitril valsartan um, and beta blockers and mineralocorticoid receptor um, antagonists. Now, um, NICE have suggested that this should be added on under the advice of a specialist clinic or under specialist supervision um, mainly because these types of patients are likely to be elderly with um, worsening renal function. Now, this may mean uh, that we get some advice of the clinic and they, in essence, just tell you to start the medication in uh, primary care rather than having to see the patient themselves. Now, the trial evidence so far shows that um, compared to placebo, uh, dapagliflozin is, um, is helpful uh, in reducing hospitalization or urgent outpatient appointments or even death from cardiovascular causes. Um, so very exciting news for us to be able to use this. Now, of particular note, um, NICE has also suggested that this is a cost-effective medication. Now, if we are going to prescribe this in primary care, we ought to just be a bit weary of um, knowing uh, or being aware of um, any predisposing factors that might increase the risk of um, ketoacidosis. And indeed, if we have patients that have coexisting uh, type 2 diabetes, we might want to um, be aware of um, or think about reducing the dose of insulin uh, to uh, lower the risk of hypoglycemia. So in summary, uh, NICE has suggested that we can think of using uh, dapagliflozin for our patients um, who are symptomatic of their chronic heart failure um, 
that have a reduced ejection fraction that are already on um, optimal medical management as an add-on therapy, but this should be done under the um, supervision of a specialist clinic. Um, I hope you found uh, this short video helpful and thank you very much for listening. Uh, please do continue to tune in to GP Notebook TV for further videos. Thank you. Thank <music> you.